What's up, Dirty Cons? This is the Owen Brothers. The soul shine on this Monday morning. Head to the pool. Uh, so it's the 11th of April, which is uh, a very important day for pararescue. It is the day that William Pitsenbarger um, gave his life uh, and laid down the expectations of you as a PJ. It uh, says that others may live, it doesn't say anything about you living, so... And, and that's why they originally gave the Air Force Cross, because the uh, decree says, you know, before personal desires and comforts, says, you know, the others may live. I mean, it, it lays it all out there that it's like, that's what we're willing to do. Um, and so they're like, well, he was just doing his job. Um, but he didn't have to stay, but he stayed because that's the right thing to do. And as PJ, he had to do the right thing. So, uh, he didn't win it. Nobody wins any of these medals. Philosophically, I can say, you know, life is a contest, but, you know, we're not, we're not splitting hairs. <laughs> it's, it's something you do because it's the right thing to do. And so, um, just kind of do some extra push-ups for him today, think about him. I had the uh, pleasure and the honor to meet his father at the, uh, uh, the ceremony when they upgraded him to the Medal of Honor. And his dad... His son was half the man that his dad was, and his son was pretty amazing. Uh, his father was a, a good, good man, so uh, I, I, I got to speak to him first after the, uh, the ceremony, and I was like, oh my god, you must be thrilled, like this is awesome, all this for your son, and, and he looked at me and he said he would trade it all, all of it, to have his son back. And I hadn't thought about that, you know, and uh, really touched me. I had to go upstairs and call my parents, and, you know, it was, it was an emotional kind of thing hearing that because as a 22-year-old senior airman PJ, what, <laughs> you know, it, you're, you're not even aware that you're even remotely not bulletproof. Uh, it was back in 2000. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah. Um, if you get a chance, there's a Jim Carrey speech uh, that he gives at the Maharishi School of Management. Uh, and I think the title of it is Choose Love, Not Fear. But uh, if you just put Jim Carrey... MSM speech. Excuse me. Um, I think you would really like it's a really good talk, speech, conversation. Um, it's funny. It, he's, he's a super genius. I mean, that dude's pretty smart. Um, so, yeah, check that out. I think you might like it. Um, he kind of gave me a thought. He was talking about being the light and then making your own light, and so then I was thinking, like, be a PJ and make more PJs, so, which is kind of what I'm trying to do, is trying to help more of you guys get through, um, although there's a bunch of people helping everybody get through, I'm not saying that, I'm doing it, I'm just saying, like, this is my little part, this is my ripple that causes a wave that a couple of, hopefully, <coughs> a couple of you catch and, you know, ride into pararescue, so, um, out there, ask questions. They're more than likely they'll help. If they're not, they got a good reason. But hit them up. Most of them don't mind. Uh, <laughs> I was reminiscing. Uh, I was talking.
came yesterday to a instru prior instructor of mine who I love, love. Um, he's been with, with me, for me since the beginning. Uh, made one of my worst days at Indoc. I don't remember what we did to piss him off, but we did something. And, and it was awesome. I mean, fear. Uh, but he prepared me and uh, called me yesterday and was giving me some helpful words. And so I'm very grateful to him. Uh, I think sometimes we don't realize what one action, one hug, one call to check up on your buddy. He just won. Dude, how you doing today? It happens to be at the right time what people need. So if you feel something, call call somebody, talk to them and say, hey, I was thinking about you or something. I don't know, man. Somehow you popped in my head and you'd be surprised there was probably a reason you're calling them. So um, don't run away from those. But so my, my story was about run groups and we used to do um, slow, slower, and slowest. I, I would tell you, I have never been a great runner. Probably not even a good runner. <laughs> I was able to do it. I kept that 645 pace, and I just held it for everything I had. And, and that's... Actually, I actually had like a 642, but, you know, I, for rounding off purposes, we'll go with that was a solid 645, but 642 is my, my goal. And um, so I had these three run groups, slow, slower, and slowest. And I, it was my first run, I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't understand. I'm like, oh, I'm slow. Okay, I didn't. I didn't hear slower and slowest. Nor did I understand what that meant because the instructors are saying you're all slow compared to us. And so I hopped in the slow group and I proceeded to get massacred. I don't think. Um, I think very few people were able to remain with the, the instructor on that run. <laughs> We were just all done. I've never ran that fast in my life. Uh, and that was the very first run in Doc. Uh, so it was a good time. It was funny. And I learned a lesson. Listen. <laughs> slower, slower, slower. It's okay. I'll run with those guys. Yeah, that's more my pace. Um, and be prepared. Always be prepared. Um, oh. So I apologize. I did not know that there was... Well, I knew that there were messages, but I didn't know anybody had written me, and I hadn't checked that thing in eight months, and so there were a lot of messages from people, so I apologize. Um, I'm getting to them as quick as I can. Uh, some are pretty cool. Um, guys had good questions. Guys had good comments. Um, there was a thing question. Uh, watch the Finn videos for the leading arm, trailing arm, uh, which is the same arm, trailing arm is finny, unless you hear combat recovery stroke, um, unless you're going to buds, and then they have different ways that they do everything from us, so, uh, figure out which school you're going to, and watch a fin video, Stu Smith's got some good ones, uh, softball, rescue athlete, uh, it's out there, I got a couple fin videos, Guy was, uh, should he go to EMT? Should he go to medical school? What should he do? Anything helps. It's medical, but if you don't have the time or the money, they'll teach you everything you need to know um, when you get to Harrison. So, this was. so don't feel like you have to show up knowing everything. I think you show up knowing steps, you know? So you show up to Indoc doing grad sand. That's where you want to be before you even come to Indoc. So there's no doubt. Because there's going to be other things that you're going to need to work on. Underwater and confidence and teamwork. So if you're also worrying about your um, your cows, you know, or am I going to make my run, uh, it, it's too much multitasking. I'm not saying it's not doable. I'm just saying it's a lot easier if you show up knowing how to do everything and then pick up on the, the new you know, of, of Indoc. Um, uh, there was another question. 
Alright, I think, let's see, we've gone about 10 minutes, I know you guys, you don't, you don't like, nothing oh, long, like, quick and sweet, uh, so I will, I will leave you with this, enjoy William Pittsburgh's day, think about him, you know, say a little, maybe a little push-up or something, a little extra, just for, for the man, met some people who knew him, told me stories about him babysitting the kids and what a nice young man he was, so definitely think about him today, and think about everybody three or four seconds, think about everybody deployed, um, you know, just hopefully everyone stays safe out there and uh, gets to do their job and as well. So, um, thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you later.